Good morning, everybody. I'm Bill Carlson. Welcome to Cafe on Tampa Online. I'm going to hand off to uh, my colleague Dell to introduce our speaker. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we miss you. We look forward to meeting in person soon. But in the meantime, we're still uh, handling uh, relative programs. Our guest today is Cynthia uh, Jandy Zinnerber, Executive Director of the HB Plant Museum, located on the grounds of the University of Tampa. It's the oldest museum in Tampa, founded in 1933. Cynthia, tell us a little bit about the museum and how it was formed. Well, the, the Tampa Bay Hotel actually operated between 1891 and 1932. And then in 33, as you mentioned, Dell, the mayor of the city of Tampa, Mayor Chauncey at the time, set up the museum to showcase the original furnishings. Um, we um, are very pleased to have over 55,000 visitors a year from about 83 countries and every state. This is in normal circumstances, of course, um, but we are doing wonderful community programs, especially now we're um, doing mostly everything online. But we are having um, visitors. We have about 60% fewer visitors now than we did at this time last year. But they're behaving well. And um, I would like to show you what they're seeing when they first enter the front door of the museum. The sign that you see is Henry Plant wearing a mask. And of course, Henry Plant is our branding symbol. So you'll see that throughout the museum. Um, also, let me find one more here. Well, wouldn't you know it, I've lost it. Um, Let's, oh, here, I've got it. This is my favorite, actually. As they come in the front door, they will see this six foot board with six old shoes on top. And Henry Plant is saying, this is six feet. You know what to do. So that is throughout the museum. Um, and then we have one more, um, wanted to just show folks who probably haven't been to the museum. Um, this is, did I show that one again? Let's try that one, one more time. Can you see the interior of the museum with some original furnishings? There it is. There Good. It is. Good. Um, well, that is really the quality of our collection. It's uh, interesting to know that this was not a private collection. This was a collection purchased in Europe to furnish a hotel. Um, so we do not use labels. Uh, the hotel would never have ha had labels on the furnishings. So we really talk about lifestyle of the early Florida tourist. And um, some of our programs, I don't know if you might be interested in hearing them, but one of my particular favorites, about 20 years ago, we realized we were only talking about the rich and the famous guests that came to the hotel. That was pretty easy because the Tribune wrote about them. They wrote letters, they had photographs, but we were completely ignoring the men and women that made this lifestyle possible, and that was the staff of the hotel. So we went to local churches, especially the older ones, on Sunday mornings and had permission to talk to the congregations. And we asked if these families had members who had worked at the hotel. And we had wonder, a wonderful outpouring of letters and oral stories and photographs. We created a small exhibit and then we created a theater program. We have eight characters. Um, just last week, we had one that we showed online that was Maggie Stroud, the laundress. 
She happened to be Doretha Edgecombe's grandmother. And some of you know that Doretha was on our school board for many years. So we had the actor, we had Doretha speaking about the life and the times of her grandmother. It was really very, very exciting. We also have Arthur Schleeman, the hunting and fishing guide. He was quite a ladies man. And uh, he talks about hunting alligators by canoe on the Hillsborough River. He later became the dog catcher for the city of Tampa. But uh, those are just two of, of the characters we have. Is that and the one that Jack Wyatt plays? Which, which one does he play? <laughs> Jack has created his very own character. Oh, but okay. I think he's actually a railroad conductor at the moment. He's quite capable of doing anything. Yeah, he's a character on his own. There. Hey, let <laughs> me ask you about the collection. Um, you know, I went to the University of Tampa and I love that building. Um, I used to know, I used to feel like I knew every inch of it. Um, but in the, um, in, the, in the collection that you have there, how, what percentage of it is original from when it was a hotel versus a collection from other places? Almost everything. I would just guess 96%. Um, we did accept in the early days of the hotel, I mean, of the museum, we accepted items that were not original. Just like the portrait behind me is a fabulous group of uh, four portraits of the Glover family from Kentucky, but they do not relate in any way to the Tampa Bay Hotel. So at some point, we're going to send those back to a Kentucky museum. We have some, we call exhibit enhancement items, such as oriental floor coverings, um, some clothing to enhance our exhibits. But we're lucky enough that the very most important objects never really left the building. What about that? So it's a huge hotel. Um, there, w there must have been objects that they threw away, right? Like the old beds or something? Is, is well, there storage? Yes. Store? There were 511 rooms in the hotel. And we really don't need examples of 50 chairs. There were probably 800 chairs in the old dining room, which is now Fletcher Lounge. We have six of them in the museum, and that is plenty because the objects, as lovely as they are, and we are so lucky to have them because most museums do not have original objects. They use objects of the period or uh, reproductions. So we right now, Bill, we're not collecting. Uh, occasionally we will find something quite wonderful that's been in a family but uh, mostly we're collecting photographs, the most valuable pieces for re research that we can find are photographs, which we take magnifying glasses to all the time. Let me ask you another another technical question. So are you all set up as a separate 501c3? Your email address says University of Tampa. Are you? What's your affiliation with University of Tampa? We are the most unusual museum that I have ever known. We really are a joint venture between the city of Tampa and the University of Tampa. The city owns the building and the city owns our collection. The university maintains the space and they, by the way, do a beautiful job of that. And they help us with bookkeeping, but we are completely self-supporting. We, we do not receive funds from the university. We do receive a, a modest amount from the city, but mostly it's uh, ticket sales and museum store and the Victorian Christmas stroll and memberships, always memberships. Tell us about the Victorian Christmas stroll because that's one of your major events and also I believe one of your major fundraisers. You're right, Dell. It's been our most major event for 38 years. It's really been Tampa's most popular holiday event and we're having such difficulty trying to decide what to do, we will be decorated by November the 20th this year. And we are planning both for on-site and online visitation. 
It's my thought that perhaps if we open a little early, we've always opened on December the 1st. However, if we open in November, that will give us an ability to social distance even more than we are able to do now. Um, we will do timed ticketing. Uh, we'll probably have less than, I would say less than a third of our visitation, but this is a tradition I don't want to end. We're thinking about doing a very professional video of, of the stroll. We're gonna bring back a lot of our favorite rooms. We might, um, you might come across Thomas Edison playing his new music machine. You might uh, come upon Babe Ruth in one of the rooms, Anna Pavlova. So we're, we're talking now. I doubt that we can do well, but we are hopeful. And anything, as you know, could change between now and then. But at the moment, we're going to do both online and on site. At this time, with critical time in the history of our city and the whole country and even the world, how can our viewers out there help the museum? I think our membership in the museum is the most uh, helpful way. We have lots of levels of membership lots of different benefits, but our members make all of these programs possible. Um, and then they also have the ability to become involved in Tampa's oldest cultural institution. And of course the building itself is our very best exhibit. Um, it's the architectural icon for the city of Tampa. So it's important to keep it going and to keep it lovely looking and fresh and exciting. So I would say membership or just a straight donation is always wonderful. The reason I ask that question, because I've been reading that throughout the United States there are estimates that uh, as many as a third of the museums might not survive the pandemic. And I know under your leadership, the Plant Museum is a lot sounder but it's important that as citizens of the community and citizens of the United States that we support our cultural institutions. Thank you, Dale. We have no intention of failing. I know, well, under your leadership, that's 100% <laughs> guaranteed. Cynthia, you have a big fan club online, people posting saying hi, and you, you can look at all the names later. Um, okay. Kathy Durden asked you to talk about the, um, the, the current special exhibit. I mean, she had a special exhibit there, what was it, a year or two ago? And then it, you have some ex special exhibit there now? We have a terrific a special exhibit that very few people have seen, although we did do an online exhibit opening. It's called The Sport in Life. And it is about all of the various sports that Gilded Age hotels offer to their guests. Um, it's... Um, we have a, a very early bicycle with wooden spokes. We have old croquet sets. We have a fabulous collection of um, unattractive woolen bathing suits. Um, but it's really a, a show that's going to be open through the stroll. And uh, I think everybody would enjoy it. We are showing old film footage of, of these sports. Um, the tennis court, which is actually right outside my office window, is now the parking lot at the University of Tampa. So we have some wonderful images of tennis being played, lots of golf here on site. There was nothing else in Tampa when Henry Plant built the Tampa Bay Hotel. So he had to create all of the activity for the guests. Do you give, um, I know this is a question that you get all the time probably, but do you ever give uh, tours of the minarets? <laughs> um, or tell the stories about what they were used for? Well, there are some lovely little rooms up there in the minarets and they were used for nannies and children in the early days. Um, but, and then later on, apparently the University of Tampa football team loved um, their minaret rooms. 
but um, they're not really safe now. The fire marshal does not allow us to use those spaces. But twice a year, the university opens the minarets. It's very quiet. You almost have to be here and stumble upon it, but it's the best site in town. I did give a private tour about uh, 15 years ago and received a $15,000 check as a result. So I'd love to have my own key. I would love to use it lots, but uh, it's really not safe. And we have to do a shout out to the Chislers also. Um, I was at the University of Tampa when the uh, minarets were redone. And uh, I think pigeons and other birds had had gone in there, and the metal was decaying. And uh, they they um, the community came together and, and redid all of them. And now that's been a long time ago since then, and they still look beautiful. They're fabulous. They were originally covered with a painted tin. They were always silver. Um, and then the university celebrated its fiftieth anniversary. And the minarets were painted gold. I don't know if, if you, either of you were in town when that happened, but they were gold for a short period of time, um, but then started peeling just in the most unattractive way. Um, so when they went up to figure out what to do about the paint, um, they realized that the termites had completely um, destroyed the interior of the minarets. So the restoration was... Um, probably about a $10 million restoration at the time. And the minarets are now covered with stainless steel. And that's on the theory that had it been available, Henry Plant would have used it. So that stainless steel, I think will be with us for a very, very long time. And we're back to the original. And you know, I've, I've I, to say, I just want to say that yes, the Chislers are an amazing organization of women. And they have personally raised, I think just over $12 million to restore the original Tampa Bay hotel structure. I, um, I, I served as a volunteer docent a couple of times for your, um, for your holiday stroll. And the most common question I got was that about the minarets and thank goodness um, Dell was there, I think maybe Rodney Kite Powell also. Uh, but Dell, can you tell everybody? I'm sure people are wondering. Tell us the architectural style that that was used on that. Why why he chose minarets? Well, uh, the architectural style is uh, generally speaking, it's Victorian, and then it's under the sub uh, subclassification of exotic Victorian. And during that period of time, uh, the Middle East was extremely exotic, and it was picked for its aesthetics rather than any symbol. So it's, uh, it's very Victorian. The Victorians were exploring the world for the first time really in the history of mankind. Uh, travel was a leisure thing. And Henry Plant and people of his class and wealth were able to explore the whole world, uh, sketch these things, and then try to incorporate them into the architecture uh, that was popular at that time, and that's Victorian. That's kind of a nutshell. I wasn't prepared for an architectural <laughs> Um, well, thanks for thanks for letting me put you on the spot. By the way, just to remind everybody watching, if you if you're uh, watching live or even later, please hit the share button. We do this as a service, a community to to bring information to everyone. And also, if you have any questions and you're watching it live, post underneath or to the right of the of the feed. One of the questions, uh, Cynthia, is uh, was there a swimming pool? Where did people swim? Did they swim in the river? <laughs> they probably did swim in the river, but we had. Uh, a really fabulous building called the Tampa Bay Casino. And the casino in the evening would seat 2000 guests for all the celebrities of the world who came here to perform. But during the day, the floor of the stage was removed and it became an indoor swimming pool. So the Tampa Bay Casino was really the it was Tampa's first performing arts center, and it was the center for all social activity until it burned in the, in the 40s, which was very sad. But the first Gasparilla events were held in the casino. Um, Anna Pavlova danced there. Um, Booker T. Washington spoke. Uh, John Philip Sousa was here. Nellie Melba, my personal favorite, who was uh, perhaps the world's first superstar, 
um, she, she was there. You might know her from Melba Toast or Peach Melba. So um, yes, it's very sad, but we have wonderful programs still from the Tampa Bay Casino. And I must say it was never, by the way, gambling. It was always just a performing arts center. Casino was a Victorian word that was used for performing arts. Charlie, did you say that building is still there or not? It is not. It is. Uh, it was down on the river between the Tampa Bay Hotel building and the Hillsborough River. What were the big ballrooms used for? Were they ever used for a casino or anything like that? Well, the, the big room was the dining room. It seated 800 people. Um, then the middle room was the grand salon and it was more of a parlor. It was filled with sofas and chairs uh, and just opulent furnishings from Europe. And it was a perfectly wonderful place to sit and watch the train come in because from those windows, you could see who was arriving and disembarking from the hotel. So um, that's used for just all sorts of community events now. And then the small room uh, closer to the museum is called the music room. And that was the ballroom. Um, and if you remember, we have windows around the room and those windows were raised and became doorways. And there are wonderful stories about couples waltzing out one doorway and in another until they went round and round the room. And then there were balconies uh, on the end for unescorted women. They would sit up there in their chairs and I suppose long for a partner and watch the dancing going on. Cynthia, you want to mention also that although the hotel was built in 1981, and it was the Victorian style, it was a very modern building. First, It was. Before. We had uh, hot and cold running water, bathrooms in all the suites, uh, electricity, a beautiful, beautiful bare bulbs uh, that wanted to be, they were never covered because you wanted everyone to know that you had electricity. Um, we had a telephone system in the hotel you could call from room to room, but Tampa really wasn't terribly wired up at the time. So we had our own system that was created by Bell. What I want to ask you, um, uh, I'm kind of a museum geek. What are the, what are some of the really rare um, uh, objects that you have with big stories behind them? Well, you have to remember this was the time of P.T. Barnum. So where there, were, there were a lot of big stories and um, we are said to have objects from Marie Antoinette. We really, we love the stories, but we can't trace them back. Um, we think of ourselves, Bill, as kind of the Ritz Carlton of 1891 everything here was meant to impress uh, but it wasn't always as rare and wonderful as the marketing brochures um, related. On the other hand it, they're invaluable to us because it was all original to the hotel. In the beginning all of these things were used and abused by our guests and uh, then when we became a museum in 1933 the University of Tampa Art Department in an effort to help um, turned over some of the objects to the students and they did all sorts of interesting things, uh, none of which were appropriate. So we are now spending lots of money uh, on, we for instance have one big swan terrine that was filled with cement it was in the con conservator's office for eight years and finally it was returned to us. And he said, I just can't do anything about this piece. But um, we, love, we love our objects. And with the help of our volunteer group, the Museum Society, we have spent well over $200,000 recently uh, bringing them back to pristine condition. 
Great. And, and uh, one of the stories that's told a lot, I think everybody in Tampa knows is the Rough Riders. Um, this building was not just important for Tampa history, but also for um, uh, U.S. history, um, to some extent, Cuban history. Um, any interesting insights that people might not know about, about that or? Well, or, well uh, yes, we are a National Historic Landmark, which is the highest rank a building can receive out of Washington. And it's not because of our fabulous architecture, although we do love the architecture, it's because this was the headquarters for the United States Army in 1898. Henry Plant had gone to Washington and had lobbied the president uh, for Tampa to be the uh, embarkation uh, city for the war in Cuba. So Henry Plant's trains could bring the troops to Tampa. Uh, the ships could take the troops to Cuba and the Tampa Bay Hotel was perfect for the foreign war correspondents and the army generals. Now, um, this is the time that our famous guest, Teddy Roosevelt was here. He was really encamped down by what is now the JCC Center, the old armory. But he got special permission to come to the hotel and spend the night with his wife, as long as he was back by uh, Reveille. So yes, Teddy Roosevelt slept here, but only for about three evenings. That was also the time that um, Frederick Remington was here as a war correspondent. And he did wonderful sketches of the surrounding areas and, and the Tampa Bay Hotel. Some very um, valuable pieces uh, in the collection uh, were done by Frederick Remington. Was Winston Churchill a uh, war correspondent at that time at the hotel? He was here a little bit earlier, Dell. He was here in about 1895. And as much as we want to believe that he stayed at the hotel, there's actually no proof. The closest we have come is um, one of our interns years ago went into the Churchill archives in England. And among his papers was a little calling card of Arthur Schliemann hunting and fishing guide. So, it looks as if maybe he was here because the card was in his collection. But on the other hand, there was another hotel down in Port Tampa that was built on stilts. It was nine miles from here. And he very well could have been staying at that hotel. That was also a plant hotel, wasn't it? Yes. There were two here in Tampa. Del, and do you have any fun? Do you have any final questions? We're about out of time. Unfortunately, we could ask you questions all day. <laughs> <laughs> One question uh, of the period of time that we're in right now, the hotel was open during um, the uh, World War I, during the woman's suffrage movement and a 1918 pandemic. Uh, are there any records of what, how the hotel was accommodating the war, uh, the pandemic, and then any impact on the woman's right to vote uh, movement at that period of time? Well, we do love our research and we could just research for the next hundred years and not find all the information we'd like to have. Um, I did notice yesterday when I was looking this up that the hotel opened um, in January, both in, 18, in 1918 and 1919. So by that time, of course, the city of Tampa still owned the hotel and um, they were opening with great fanfare about the dances that were going to occur twice a week. There was really nothing to talk about the hotel and the pandemic. I did just interestingly read, because I'm a member of the downtown Rotary, that um, Mayor McKay had deputized the downtown Rotarians to help with preventing spitting on the sidewalks of the city. And that was the only indication of what was going on in Tampa that I've been able to find. Hmm. Well, we, as I said, we could go on forever. Um, uh, Cynthia, do you want to uh, 
plug again your um, website um, that where people can sign up. You you have you're taking visitors right now. You people can sign up as members. They can donate. Also, um, we should mention the gift shop. When I've been there uh, visiting with people from out of town, or also um, with the art, uh, the the holiday stroll. Um, the gift shop is fantastic. And if you're looking for unique Tampa oriented gifts, it, it's a great place to go. Can you tell us about that real fast and, and tell us your websites? Well, the website is plantmuseum.com. And um, uh, since the pandemic this year, we have really, really expanded it. You will find amazing things. We have put uh, three to four new exhibits on the website that you can enjoy from your home. Uh, the museum store is um, definitely one of the best I've ever visited, and we still have terrific merchandise. Um, but you asked me earlier, and I think I'll just say once again that the most um, helpful thing that the community could do would be to join the museum. And there are lots of comfortable levels. Um, and lots of, of interesting benefits. One, um, one of my favorites that I hope we'll be able to repeat this year is that for our large donors, we have a dinner each spring that replicates a menu that was done at the Tampa Bay Hotel. So I usually go into the archives and I will find one of the 125 original menus that we own and I'm get, I will give it to the chef. Mise en place usually does that dinner. We use mismatched china, mismatched silver because the hotel was known for mismatched elegant place settings. And um, we replicate the dinner that was done in 1893 or 1901. It depends on which year we, cho we choose. So um, that's, that's a really terrific that's benefit great. for our large donors. And at the very least, if you sign up, you can get emails. They'll tell you all about the, the great gifts that are there and the exhibitions and everything. And, um, uh, you know, example, the one that Kathy did last year, which we talked about on a previous show, was just fantastic. It was world class. Um, we're out of time, unfortunately. Thank you so much. We'll have to have you on again soon. Um, as we said before, uh, if you're just watching, um, please hit the share button so your friends and family can see this and, and support the museum and other ideas. And uh, look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you, Bill. Thank you, Dale.